Hey guys, Bittersteel here, back with another video. And today, today I want to start off with a thank you. Thank you for helping this channel reach 20,000 subscribers. That's a huge step, a gigantic milestone, and I never thought we'd actually get here. So to even get here at all is amazing, and to get here so quickly is just incredible. So thank you. And to thank you guys, today we will suffer. I will repay you for your generosity with my suffering. We are going for another extreme achievement. You've already seen me do this one. Let's hop right in. As France, we will attempt to achieve Die Perfidious Albion. Now you're saying, but Peter Steele, you've already done this one. It's not even that hard. So where's the suffering? Well, this time we will do it as Vichy France, not the Nation Française, no. As capitulated Vichy France, we will come back and take out the UK. So if you want to see me suffer, stick along for the ride. It's gonna be juicy. Ah, 1936, France. Such a peaceful, tranquil nation. All right, so we'll leave Iron Man mode on, obviously. Otherwise, we can't get the achievement. And so, you know, I'm not cheating. And then there's historical AI focuses. We'll leave that one on because, well, I like that predictability. Let's go. First, if you like these videos, leave a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. Also, check out our Discord server. It's a really great place to hang out, make some friends, play some multiplayer games, and just talk Hearts of Iron and whatever you want, really. It's a pretty cool place. That said, enough rambling. Let's get on to the video. Ah, France, what a glorious mess you are. All right, few things. If we're going to be playing as Vichy, we cannot rely on, uh, well, a lot. So we'll start by setting ourselves up as best we can. I'm going to group the army up here in Paris and then redistribute them later. Military factories are pretty much good like this. Two on trucks, two on artillery, two on support equipment, two on infantry equipment. Anything fresh we'll uh, redistribute later. I'm gonna fill out all the dockyards and all these vessels so they are built as quickly as possible and I don't think I'm gonna bother with the submarines. No, I'm not gonna bother with the submarines. I'm just gonna get rid of those. Now to do this as Vichy France will require a slightly different approach from doing this as regular France. First of all, the focuses. Our focus tree will change when we become Vichy and anything we've done in here will be irrelevant. So we will only pick things in this focus tree that provide an immediate benefit or a benefit that remains with us. What do I mean by that? We will go with focuses that give us cores because we keep those we will go with focuses that give us factories infrastructure dockyards the works because we keep those and we'll go with focuses that will give us national spirits that improve our country in the short term so research bonuses production bonuses efficiency bonuses things that we can use in that build-up because when we capitulate we lose all national spirits and all pp picks so we'll have to uh work around that and construction well construction is obvious we construct in the south i'm gonna open with some infrastructure follow that up with a few civilian factories once those are done we will shift gear into military production. As for our focuses, I am going to start with revive the national block, pick laissez-faire for the industry focuses, then protect rights of man, not because of the stability, that's irrelevant, because it leads into the Bloom Violet proposal, giving us cores on Algeria. I could go with the popular front, but the popular front doesn't really have any lasting benefits like laissez-faire here does. So that is my choice here. It's irrelevant if you go left or right anyway. If you come out of this as Vichy, you get locked into the national block. If you come out of this as a free France, you get locked into the popular front. The choice doesn't matter yet. As for research, we do keep our research. So what we want is to get the maximum out of it. So get all the research bonuses we can, get research speed upgrades, get all the research we need to survive and to thrive out before we lose it all. I will group up the Navy. One good thing about Vichy France is that it gets to keep most of the Navy. That's going to be helpful. I'll just just group up the Air Force doesn't really matter because I think we lose most of it anyway. So with that basic setup done, 
let's get going. This is going to be really, really interesting. And I think most of you know what Vichy France looks like, so... You also get to keep most of the colonies. I think the stuff we're guaranteed to lose is the Caribbean holdings. But we do hold on to most of the African colonies. We hold on to Madagascar and uh, the French Far East. Now, there are RNG events, though I'm not sure if they're RNG. If they aren't, could somebody correct me? That will make the goal do speeches that make these territories flip to the um, Free French. And there's an option for the UK to do border conflicts for the territory as well. Flipping it to the Free French. Also, not a great proposition. All right, most of the army has arrived. Let's organize these guys a little bit. I'm going to take out all the regular infantry divisions and all the other infantry divisions. That's 28. Then we'll take out all the reserve infantry divisions. So these guys, Colonial. Okay. Um, the 23 units we have left, so all the tanks, trucks, mountaineers, horses can go. Don't need you. Then we reorganize these guys a little bit, so there's 24 in every army. And just get rid of the weakest ones. Leaving us with two armies of 24, and I'll turn all of them into the basic infantry division template. I'll put one army on the border with Italy to defend that at all costs. And the second army can just uh, chill in North Africa, and half of them can chill in Syria. You never know what happens. We're gonna have these guys exercising as well. Get us a bit of army experience. I'm not gonna assign generals because it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, Germany remilitarizes. Just issue a diplomatic objection. It would be cool if we could start a fight now and capitulate now, but um, we'd not be in the Allies because the UK never backs you. There's gonna be a civil war. It's gonna be horrible. Let's just issue a diplomatic objection. And we'll continue all the way down to the bloom proposal first. So let's say fair. There's something to be said about the agricultural protectionism, giving you 7.5% uh, construction speed on, inf on civilian factories. But it's a national spirit, so you'll lose it when you get defeated. And I think it's better to rush the industry so you can recover quicker afterwards. But I'm not sure. And here's research. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing or what you should do because I do not recommend you do this. If you want the achievement, do it the way I did it in my other video. I'll leave a link up there somewhere in the corner or maybe down in the description. This is a challenge, but I'll lay down my plans for you anyway. I'm going to rush as far ahead in the industry department as I can, and I am going balls deep for tanks. Yes, I am going straight for medium tanks. I want my medium tanks. I'm going to use all the armor I can just to hoard tanks. Hopefully we don't lose too many of them when we capitulate, and we'll use that to take out the UK. I've recently discovered, or rather rediscovered, my love of 40 with armor, so it should be fun. Oh, an espionage agency? Doesn't matter, you lose this when you capitulate, so it's pointless. It's almost like it's not supposed to go this way. Uh, elections, again, doesn't matter. Sure, sure, just, just put a bunch of communists in there. It's fine. I'm just gonna pick all the events that give us communism, because I'm gonna ban communism next. All right, dispersed or concentrated? Dispersed or concentrated? You know, I'm not sure if concentrated is gonna win out this one. It might, but I love myself some dispersed. For everyone that I'm disappointing with that choice, well, too bad. And Again, there's not a broad plan laid out for my focuses. I'm just going to pick things that benefit me very short term or that I know I won't lose. And I'm going to start work on my medium tanks way, way ahead of time. But it's fine. It's fine. We'll get them out in time. I'm also going to use these ahead of time bonuses to rush my uh, dispersed as far ahead as I can. All right, we've got 100 political power. Uh, once we have 50 command power, I am going to send an attaché, but I don't think I'll send one to Spain. It's usually over too quickly to really get the full benefit, so I'm going to hoard it a little bit until things kick off in China. That's a far better deal. Wish I could pick doctrines, but doctrines take so long because of our victors of the Great War national spirit. It's not worth it unless you can spend 100 political power, or I mean 100 army experience, so I'm not gonna. Instead, I'll just uh, research whatever's optimal. Not gonna pick anything in the industry yet. I want to keep that bonus available for my dispersed. All right, Bloom Violet proposal done. We should have cores on our Algeria now. Yeah, cores, great. Anything further down here is pretty 
pointless. Review foreign policy, we could go with Britain that way, but again, it's pretty pointless. There's some good boosts to be gained from economic devolution, promote entrepreneurship and stimulate the dynamic market though. And the sooner I get those, the more they benefit me. Alternatively, we could go for devalue the franc and get all the factories from this branch because I hold on to most of these territories. That would be nice. So I'm first going for the national spirits in this branch, so these three, and then I'll go with devalue the franc to pick up the maximum reward possible. Now these three research slots as a major, it's not great, is it? Can get two more from this branch, but we lose them anyway upon capitulation, so I don't think it's worth getting those. By the time we get these, uh, it's almost over anyway. Well, over. By that I mean it's about to start. Now, it's an interesting way to play this country, knowing that you're going to fail, but trying to fail in such a way that you'll succeed. Very interesting. All right, Spain requests aid. Could send aid. Then leasing them a bit of equipment might be helpful. 50 political power is not much. And the war in China isn't set to kick off yet. I usually don't do this one, but it might actually be helpful for us. More XP is good. Then again, I'll get plenty of experience from Japan. So we're going to exercise the Navy a little bit. The higher level the ships, the well, less damage they take, more damage they do. I do want that Navy to stay in one piece for as long as they can, if they are going to assist me in invading. All right, it's March of 37, so things are about to kick off in China. So I'm going to improve my relations with the nationalists. I could do the same with Japan and send an attaché there, but that won't work. They have strategic reasons to be hostile towards me, so they will never accept my attaché. China will. The downside of playing France is you have a giant navy and no oil. You just have to import some. There's no way around it. We're gonna exercise the navy, we'll have to import oil. All right, stimulating the dynamic market and we can move on. I'm just gonna follow up all my construction with military factories in the entire region. I'm gonna avoid Savoy and Corsica though. They tend to be given to Italy every now and then. And I'm not too keen on building in my colonies just yet. Like I said, uh, there are events that can pop up where the goal makes a speech and your governor in Syria, North Africa, Southwest Africa betrays you. Even Madagascar can sell you out and join Free France. So that's a worst case scenario. Gotta be prepared for it. All right, dynamic market stimulated. Let's continue. My guess is we will benefit from devaluing the franc and getting all these factories and investments done in our colonies, assuming we'll hold on to the colonies. This is a bit of a gamble. I think it's gonna pay off. Besides, we can't move on to the rearmament yet. Don't have the war support for it. And anything else here is fleeting at best. We don't get to hold on to it anyway. Ah, Japan declared war on China. Perfect. We can send our attaché to the Chinese. Let the army experience flow. Again, we don't get to keep the army experience, but we can use the army experience to change our templates. And we do get to keep our templates. I think that's a good investment. Actually, we could begin rearmament and get two military factories, or rather four military factories, but they'll be built in places that I don't get to keep anyway. Tempting, but... Uh... No. All right, army experience is starting to flow, so I'll change my templates right away. The basic infantry here, 18 combat width. I'll slap one more infantry battalion in there. Now they're just a 20 combat width infantry block. We can fill this out with support equipment later. These will be my basic troops. The frontline filler, if you will. A few moments later. Uh, Turkey wants a Tay. I don't really care, but I also don't want to give anything away. I'll just hold on to a Tay. Doesn't matter. I devalued the franc. Uh, we'll just develop the metropole and the colonies. Get all of these done. Indochina, Syria, West Africa, the whole bunch. Then get colonial industry, industrial expansion and military factories. If we can, because we might run out of time before that. We have another 150 political power. Like I said, any pick we make is gone the instant we capitulate, but we might be able to choose something that gives us a benefit in the meanwhile. Uh, could go up to free trade. That would give us more factories for the time being, give us more construction speed, research speed, factory output. I think those are really good. I can't really bump up to a meaningful economy law anyway, and any other pick is just 
pretty much pointless. We'll never make back the Silent Workhorse. None of these. Maybe the War Industrialists? No, I think we'll be better off just going with the um, free trade pick here. There's nothing fancy we can do with our political power anyway. We could improve worker conditions, get stability up, but... It's gonna be irrelevant anyway. I'll just go up to free trade. More factories that way. Right, meanwhile, we're also well on our way regarding medium tank research. I'm gonna start spamming out the divisions. I'll switch into those. So this um, Division Légère Mécanique... Uh just spam out a bunch of those. They currently use light tanks. I will never get all of these built. Don't worry, that's not the point. I just want many, many, many of these divisions, even if they have low strength, just to be out the door. Because the more divisions I have, the bigger the chance that I'll actually get to hold on to some of them whenever we capitulate. Any equipment in the stockpile, I assume, will be lost. But any equipment in those divisions can go back to me. So if we manage to salvage 10 of those divisions, 15 maybe? Maybe? Who knows? We can always just recombine those into a single fully functional division and uh, keep producing. It's just, I want to save as many tanks from the Germans or from simply vanishing as I can. That's my reasoning anyway. I could 100% be wrong. If I am, let me know in the comments. We're also going to start spending a little bit of political power upgrading these to uh, roughly the format I need. I tend to roll with 7 motorized and 13 tanks, so we'll start with adding some motorized. Also, I don't like recon, so I'm going to get rid of mobile recon and replace you with uh, support artillery. Oh, reminds me, should also start making a bit of toad anti-air. And after that, we will crank out nothing but medium tanks. Many, many medium tanks. In terms of support companies, I want to make sure I get logistics and signal companies. And it might not be terrible to get MPs as well, because we are occupying quite a bit of land in Africa. And our compliance is going to be decimated once we capitulate. All right, medium tanks are researched. We can start switching these into our tank template and produce them en masse. Medium twos, yeah, we're not going to get those anytime soon. I'll just dedicate my research to improving what I can. So we can switch out these light tanks for mediums. Make this a 40 with medium tank division. My favorite. Don't have the army experience just yet, but I just need uh, seven motorized divisions and 13 medium tanks. So four more, four more? Yeah, four more medium tanks in here. And then we just fill it out with some support companies. As for medium tank production, highest priority. Just cram everything in there. So this is what you'd end up with 40 combat with. Good stats, decent division, and just uh, probably add logistics, signal companies, and should be good, should be good to go. Maybe anti-air as well. Yeah, anti-air wouldn't be a bad thing. 20 minutes later. Now it looks like the clock is ticking April 39. Let's just throw a quick guarantee of independence on Poland. If you don't do that, we'll have to wait for the Germans to attack us directly since we aren't in the Allies, because I have haven't done the required focuses for that, but uh, this way we'll still get in on World War One as soon as possible, allowing us to capitulate quickly, form Vichy quickly, and have just a few more months to build up before we take on the UK. Oh, things are happening. UK guaranteed our independence, Italy joins Germany. All right, time is running out, so let's get those military factories, and I think maybe one more focus, though I doubt it. There goes Germany. Poland refuses the German ultimatum. That's it. We will be honoring our well, guarantee of independence on Poland and we will be overrun. That's okay. It's all part of the plan. As for focuses, well, not much point in doing any of these. We will be overrun before any of them are finished. Just in case the Germans take a long time, I'll just take naval rearmament, get maybe some two dockyards in Provence. Ask to join the Allies, just in case, because we need to be in a faction. We need to be in the Allies. Uh, otherwise, we would just lose the game. And the Italians have gleefully joined in, but we will defend against the Italians. Italy holds on to these territories if they can catch them. Not gonna happen. Not on my watch. Oh, UK bravely rushing to my defense. Not even defending myself, man. Don't bother. And that's it. The fall of Paris. Capitulation. This is a disaster. France has capitulated. Dark times indeed. Here is the defeat. The battle is lost. Paris has fallen into German hands. And it's only a matter of time before the rest of the country is occupied. Well, okay. Four options. We collaborate with the Germans. This is the one we want to form Vichy. The fright goes on. This is where we play as Free France. Let us merge with Britain. This is game over for us, but this is where the AI can form the Franco-British Union. Or continue the fight. Um, this is the same as forming Free France without actually forming Free France? 
And um, this will not see a Vichy France pop up. AI never picks this option. AI always goes with the fight goes on. We, however, we must collaborate with the Germans. And the traitor de Gaulle has escaped to the United Kingdom and has formed the Free French Forces. Unacceptable. All right, let's take stock of our situation. Armed forces. We have 26 divisions. Uh, got to hold on to a good amount of tanks. I'll reorganize those in Marseille. Decent amount of infantry. I'll park those on the border with the UK and a few of those on the border with Italy just in case you never know what they're gonna do no but this is just in case the UK pushes up to that border and starts doing border conflicts good amount of ships that we got to hold on to so the Navy is in good shape Air Force not much to write home about it's an Air Force it will serve production capacity all right we'll need to put everything back here we have a long climb ahead of us to get out of this desperate situation but we still have our research have a look our research is still ongoing so that's nice thought that might be wiped out but no good dockyards we have one dockyard start making convoys now for construction we do have a nice amount of civilian factories considering we've just been destroyed uh, but we are giving most of those away to the germans because we are occupied let's look here the occupation cost giving us 20% consumer goods factories. That's not great. That also means we will not be able to use any factories for construction or repairs or anything until we get rid of that. To get rid of that, we have to rush all the way down to end the occupation. So we will go with the emergency powers into national revolution, rush down to mandatory work service, then rush down to venerate the craftsman, then take the center path all the way down to end the occupation. This is a long path. It might actually take well into 1940 to, to get here. The USA will join the Allies before we finish. There's nothing I can do about that. There's, it's just impossible to get there quicker and we must take that focus to be able to one, declare war and two, create or join factions. So we cannot do anything until we are there and along the way like i said before general de gaulle can be a bit of a problem he can pop up and demand territories who might cave in he can take syria north africa french indochina madagascar and west africa that's not good i don't think there's a way for me to prevent that i station troops in syria and north africa all the time and that hasn't changed the outcome of those events ever now there's also a good chance he doesn't do that so We'll see what happens. And then there's also the option of the Italians demanding Savoy or Savoy and Corsica or just Corsica. Usually they demand Savoy and Corsica and the Germans being such good friends with Mussolini. Just give away hard territory most of the time. So we have a lot of bumps ahead of us. I hope we don't get destroyed along the way. But uh, the march continues onwards to end the occupation. And meanwhile, we lick our wounds and try and make the best of it. Now, our first order of business will be to kiss up to our new continental overlords, make sure the Germans lack us enough to reinstate us, and build up. We will need to recruit a lot of troops, and we will need to fix our industry. Well, fix. It's not terrible, but it could be better. Also, somehow, two of my divisions got stuck here in the desert. Not great. It's unfortunate. Bye-bye. As far as my armor is concerned, I'm not sure if I want to fill these up or just join them all into a single division and uh, recruit fresh ones. Not I think sure. it's best if I just uh, group all of these up and start recruiting fresh divisions. I think that's less of a mess. Ah, cat by manpower in the field. Should've known. Played myself. Man, I don't like that I'm using all my factories for consumer goods. Please, Mr. Schmidtler, give me back my industry. These are way, way ahead of time, but I'm tempted just to force them through anyway. I mean, why not? Why shouldn't I have them? Almost forgot. Let's take stock of the generals. And they're all pretty bad. We got Orly. Orly? Orly. Hansiger, Fredenberg, Pilot, Schorch, Vegan, Besson, Gamelin. Yeah, none of these are spectacular and they're all old guard so kind of sucks but uh, we'll have to make do i'll just put away gone overall command at least we're starting to pump out tanks again we need a lot of them we need a lot of tanks we'll probably do with more infantry equipment and just more stuff in general as well oh well we'll build more factories i i just hope that 
the gold doesn't come in and uh, steal our colonial holdings, especially Algeria. If I lose Algeria, that's going to be a big pain. Ooh, I forgot political power. Now we can actually spend it again. I will go straight up to war economy. Get that industry pumping out again. Oh yeah, that's much, much better. We're still wasting a ton of factories on consumer goods, but at least we're building again. And the national revolution is complete. Time to work our way towards a nation reborn. So like I said, we'll go right branch, left branch, and then center branch just to get the most out of it. Especially concessions to the Germans is pretty good, pretty good. It is unfortunate that we lost so much compliance because we're not really getting the most out of our colonial holdings this way. At least Algeria is still, still okay because they're a core. Like I said before, this isn't the way you're supposed to do this achievement. But it makes for a very fun challenge. And by fun, I mean painful. Painful suffering. Oh, Italy lost uh, Sardinia already. That was quick. And more political power. We'll have to ramp up our conscription law eventually. We're on volunteer only. Thanks for that, uh, Mr. Schmidtler. But I think it's a good idea to get a silent workhorse first. Maximize our PP gains. We can finally fill all those slots. We might even be able to get a tank designer before the medium tanks for a finish, maybe? Who knows? I'm gonna trade for a little bit more oil. That way I can keep my uh, armor divisions training until they're at least level three. It's not optimal to burn through equipment like this, but uh, we will not be able to get a lot of tanks. And I want the ones that we do have to be really, really good when we do finally take the fight to the British. Oh god, we need a lot of infantry equipment. Concessions to the Germans done. This is uh, the big one, or a big one. Uh, gives us a few options. We can give the Germans basing rights, and that will take 5% uh, pressure off our consumer goods. Also send them guest workers, so we give up manpower and we get 5% uh, consumer goods. Yay! Oh, and the Germans get some more production efficiency growth. Yeah, fine. And we can produce aircraft parts for the Germans as well. And again, 5% consumer goods for us. So that will reduce the penalty here by a significant margin. And suddenly, we once again have an economy. That's so gonna eat into our manpower. It's okay, we're still on volunteer only and we can ramp up still. Right, we have 150 political power. What I could do now is get a tank designer to influence those uh, medium twos we're building, but none of these are really great. 5% yeah, armor and hard attack, not terrible. 5% reliability and soft attack, also not terrible, but it's a 150 PP spend and we have a lot of work ahead of us and I think we better work toward it's getting this war industrialist get more military factories up, get more tanks built. I think in the long run that is going to be optimal for us. Economy's in the gutter, I have to pull it out. I say that, but we're not doing that bad. Also, we have lost that terrible, terrible national spirit, which means we can go doctrines and I'm going mobile warfare because why not? All right, right branch done, on to the left branch. In case anyone's wondering why I'm not doing any of these on the right side, one, they're not that great, and two, we really need to get here as quickly as possible before too many Americans show up on the home islands. Oh, what's this? Ah, good thing I left troops on this border. The UK is doing their uh, border conflict. If we lose, we're screwed. If we win, we get to hold on to Syria. So if the UK were to win this, which it doesn't look like they're about to, they would see this entire Syrian region flip to Free France. But it looks like we'll win this relatively easily. Vichy holds on to Syria. Aha. All right, one more trick I have up my sleeve, and I probably should have thought of this before, but we could change our basic infantry template to this. This is just a standard 20 with infantry, but better. As long as our country has access to a cavalry expert or genius in the high command, this one is gravy. As long as it has six cavalry, it makes us count as a cavalry division, which is great. Because even though we lose a few stats for adding all that cavalry, it's made up by that 10% overall increase by the cavalry expert that we can hire. Now, they do actually have worse stats per industrial capacity than a 10-0 with just the expert, but the best part is they don't only get cavalry bonuses they also count as infantry meaning we can add infantry and cavalry high command bonuses and general bonuses so uh moving forward if you want to play france or i think bulgaria has those as well this is a very very funky way to make your units just a little bit better meanwhile damn it there is one of those events charlotte de gaulle has done his speech and a region has defected fortunately it's just west africa but i have a feeling he's going to pull the same thing with North Africa, Syria, maybe even French Indochina or Madagascar. We'll see, we'll see. Not too happy about this though. It does look like we are 
desperately short on manpower, so our first pick is actually going to be wrapping up our conscription laws again. Unless the Germans actually hand back our territory, then we're fine. Still, it's a pretty big gamble to rely on the Germans to do that. I'll just hold on to the political power for a bit until we know what Germany does at the end of the occupation tree. If they give us back our land, perfect. I'll just get army high command. If they don't, I'll quickly ramp up conscription laws. All right, got 300 political power in the bank. I can make one pick and I'll just reserve the other to see if I need to go up to a higher conscription law. I'll just get the army maneuver specialist here. Division speed is always great. And next we either take the army logistics specialist or we ramp up our recruitment laws. 2000 years later damn that's bad all right so for this event there are two outcomes the one we have now where mr schmittler refuses and one where they give you back all of france which is what we would want ideally now a quick uh, perusing of the uh, event files teaches me that there's an 80 percent chance for the mr schmittler here to actually give us back our land however for that he needs to own moscow and if he doesn't the odds of us getting our land back are slim to none well, maybe not slim to none, just greatly reduced, leaving us with this. So we have two options. We can join forces with Charles de Gaulle, the traitor, or we will answer this insult with steel and fire. That gives us back the standard French focus tree with the national bloc and Latin Entente unlocked. If Mr. Schmittler had agreed, we would be locked into towards a new Europe. Now for focuses, I'll just begin rearmament, get me a few more factories, and then see where we end up it's not going to be terribly important i would like to have um hostilities with the uk concluded before any of that becomes a problem meanwhile we can ask to join the axis perfect great we stand together and it's also time to mobilize more troops because i had hoped to get my country back alas here we are let's start setting up the naval invasion plans all right as for naval invasions with these tanks i have two assigned to the north of hull two to the south of hull and then two with one each, uh, a little further south still. I'll use Aye. some of the infantry to hit Hull itself. Though I think I would do better to use my uh, sl slightly higher quality infantry for that. Do a bit of a switcheroo here. So I'll use two more infantry to hit Hull itself. And two more infantry to hit the area south of Newcastle. That's my 10 naval invasions set up. Rather 10 divisions assigned. I have the dockyards and everybody can move into position. Aye. I'll have my support infantry in the port of Leeuwarden to quickly reinforce the fight once my landings are successful and the remainder of my infantry will set up in defensive positions in Africa. Hopefully they will be sufficient to deal with the UK here and the Americans. Not to forget there are many many Americans here probably anything to just tie down their divisions really we'll transport the navy into position as well and whatever air force we were able to uh, piece together will assist now as you can see by the germans occupying half my land and me about to go to war with the allies this is not a setup or a long campaign no 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 that went out the window with the treachery by mr schmittler but we can still achieve our goal of die perfidious albion extreme edition we'll show the germans what a good frenchman's Aye. worth all right everyone seems to be in position it's time to set everything up final check naval evasion support that's fine we should be able to get naval superiority the air force or what has to pass for an air force is also ready to go armies are in position Africa is as secure as it's going to be. Italy is about to get its rear kicked, so yeah, should be spicy. Just have to pick the one that doesn't include the Soviet Union, so I might be able to trade with some oil somewhere. All right, let's join the war. Let's also take the game speed way down. I'll need some serious micro. All right, great. I'm not at war with the Soviet Union, meaning I can still trade oil. The Soviets, thank you. Convoys are gonna get sunk though, but okay, oh well. Maybe let's suck Romania dry first. Dear God, I hope I can pull this off. Right, naval invasions are off. Looks like a mostly unopposed landing, so at least I have that going for me after the nightmare that this run has been so far. Right, the infantry has made landfall. I'll ship everyone else across as well. Oh dear Lord, that's a lot of troops in the area. Ah, uh, yikes. Oh, I'm 
I'm pretty sure the only chance I have of winning this, like the slight chance I have of winning this, is if I manage to encircle their capital. If I can encircle London and destroy the visions there, that might be enough to give me victory. Because I can starve them to death. Anything else is uh, pretty much off the table. African campaign virtually unopposed, so why am I even spending this much resources on it? Uh, clean that up, pull those troops out if need be. I also need to secure some ports here just in case the UK tries naval landings, which they very much like to do. I don't want naval landings. Maybe I can set strike force order to get myself some cheeky naval superiority. I don't know how much that's gonna, gonna help. Oh god, that is a lot of Americans here. Really, Germany? Fine, you can have Savoy. Really, you, you gave Savoy to these idiots. Really, yeah, stellar idea, Germany. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, the micro is getting unreal at this point, but uh, there's still there's still hope. There is still hope. Just just gotta get here before the Americans can really consolidate. Also gonna need to leave the visions behind on ports for the inevitable naval landings that they're gonna try and pull. Oh good, that's a good amount of divisions we cut off in Cornwall. Alright, uh, clean that up, leave a division here to guard the port and focus on this part. They're not entrenched, they're being hit by armor. Should be able to. Oh, they're able to pierce me, but not all of my tanks. Just some of my tanks, probably the under-equipped divisions. Oh yes, alright, alright, alright. We got London fully encircled. Good, good. Uh, now they clean that beach hut to the south of Dover and Portsmouth. Clean this up, because, oh my god, that is some fierce, fierce resistance. And then redeploy the tanks to clean up. Yes, 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 yes. It does look like we are actually getting somewhere. With London encircled, they should start taking massive, massive attrition. How's Africa looking? Uh, Africa's looking fine, I'd say. As long as these divisions don't do anything stupid, that is. All right, all right. Cornwall's cleaned up, so just the southern beaches and the hills of Scotland. No. But we're pushing into Scotland nicely. All right, I'm leaving some garrisons behind just in case they want to try a stupid naval landing. The navy's also in position to provide some cover from that. I think we might actually pull this off, despite Mr. Hitler's best efforts. Meanwhile, Italy is doing in Italy, so I don't know how long they'll hold out. Oh yeah, London is entirely surrounded. Now we start pounding on whatever they have left in the beaches. We slowly tighten the noose. Oh, the Americans are in Rome already. Perfect. Just perfect. Oh yes, and with that we've cleaned up everything to the south. I will leave garrisons at the important ports so we don't get naval invaded to the rear and I have time to redeploy the armor to meet any challenge. Now we just need to clean up in the north and then finally take London and we will have our die perfidious Albion. And will you look at that, we control everything on the British home islands except for London. If we take London the UK will be capitulated. I'd say that is not a bad day's work for little old Vichy France. Humiliated and beaten down and still coming in clutch. They're also dominating in Africa. We have done great things for the Axis. It's a shame Mr. Schmittler would not realize this and give us back our damn country. So with that, let's see if we can at least get to the traitor of the goal. Oh, it's gonna be tight. I'm getting naval invaded by British myself. Um. Might need to deploy some countermeasures here. Good thing I had some tanks saved up. These can be very helpful. They should be able to hold those ports. At least long enough for reinforcements to arrive. And we just need to beat down the final garrison in London. Oh, and with that, there we go. London has fallen. The UK capitulates. Oh, isn't that... Oh, oh no. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna mark this up as good enough. I um, seem to have missed a tiny slice here, but I, I'm gonna mark this down as good enough. This, this, this is good enough. Fine. We have achieved 
Die Perfidious Albion as a capitulated Vichy France. And for extra suffering, we didn't even get our country back. So I'd say we did really well considering the circumstances, wouldn't you? Yes, Philippe Etain, the Lion of Verdun, you have done it again. You have made France a nation of proud men once more. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was a great deal of suffering seeing everything that could go wrong go wrong. But in the end, we came out on top and that is what matters. If you liked the video, leave a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. Hit me up in the comments with your questions, suggestions. I try to read as many of them as I can. And if you didn't like it, leave a dislike and tell me what I did wrong in the comments. Always looking to learn. And if you want to support the channel, consider uh, signing up for the channel memberships. There's a button down there next to the subscribe button that says join and it will take you to the membership page that has all the explanations that you need. All right, this has been me, Bittersteel. Have a good one. See ya.